All right, folks, this is the long anticipated review <laughs> of the Perpetual Chronograph watch. Um, I apologize for the lateness of this, but here it is. And um, so, yeah, this is the uh, Perpetual is the brand name. It's a, a Chinese brand. And um, by the way, we are listening to Thundercat. It's a mix with different bands, but Thundercat is, well, he's kind of a weird experimental soul funk, I don't know, jazz type guy who plays bass and does electronica type stuff. Anyways, kind of interesting stuff. So this is the, this is the Perpetual is the brand name and the, the watch itself is the Chronograph C04, I believe. Um, let me just look, look this up again. CO5, CO4, um, maybe it's the 05, no, 06, okay, yeah, it's the CO6, um, this is on, I believe, the calfskin strap, you can also get it on alligator strap, um, yeah, queer ver veritable, I don't know what it says, anyways, so this, this is the Perpetual, and it is a cool little watch. I mean, it really is, you know, if you're willing to go outside of the normal sort of brand names, you can find some interesting watches out there, interesting deals. Um, this came in a little box here. I'll just show you the box that came in. Pretty, pretty nondescript, Perpetual. There you go. Um, not, not really, not very exciting. Pretty standard, basic box. So the watch itself, um, it has a 41 millimeter case, and it is 13 millimeters thick. Um, it is steel and with a leather strap. It's a nice leather strap, although I, you know it looks like it looks like alligator style, but I think this is calfskin. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I can really verify that. Um, it doesn't say, although queer verita. Veritabi? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think that means alligator or calf. Anyways, um, so the watch itself is pretty, you know, it's, it's pretty average size, 41 millimeters. Um, that, that is, historically speaking, that's on the larger side, but in modern terms, it's pretty average. Um, I think 40 to 42 is sort of the, the new average and 43 and above is large and below 40 is, um, small, but it really depends upon the wrist, of course. Um, as you can see, it's a chronograph. I don't, it's not wound. It's a manual wind and it's also got a moon phase. So I will show you some of those functions in a moment. Um, just to give you a better look, it's the, the, those two pushers, well they're not pushers, I forget what they're called when you, um, the top one's for the date, the date dial at the top, see? And then the bottom one's for the moon phase. Which is tricky to set because it's hard to do it with accuracy, you have to kind of guess. Um, you can you can do it when it's a full moon or when it's com completely, you know, a new moon or, a, or no moon. So also, here's another cool feature on the back is you have an open case back and a very cool looking uh, movement. Deployant clasp. The clasp itself feels a little, a little cheap, a little, little light metal. I don't think it necessarily is, but it's just not super solid. You can see there's the perpetual logo. Um, All right, there you go, perpetual logo. So here, here's the open case back. Um, the writing on the edge, it says, it's hard to do this with the, this is, it says stainless steel, perpetual, water resistant 30 meters. So it's not really a sports watch. That just means that if it's raining, <laughs> it's not gonna hurt it. So this has a, has a nice movement for, for this, this priced watch um, it's I believe they use seagull movements um, it's 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 decorated a little bit it's got the blue screws it's got some 
some some a little bit of decoration there. I suppose the only the only fault I would give it here, where you get a sense that it's not a really expensive watch you're looking at, um, is something I didn't even notice at first until I read a review of it before I purchased it. Is you can see the plastic case in there. It's hard to see it from from here, but it's the movement's encased in a plastic case. And I don't know. It seems like a, a, a a corner that shouldn't have been cut, but I don't think, I mean, it's not a really a big deal. You can barely see it, but it definitely makes it noticeable that this is not, you know, a three, three, four thousand dollar watch, you know? So, but yeah, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a nice movement. Um, I have not timed it. So Don, and for those who are, uh, movement fetish, fetishists, <laughs> I apologize. You're going to have to, uh, just go without, let me just see if I can find anything about the movement itself. Um, you know, I'm trying to remember actually what the, it just says fully decorated manual wind movement. What does it say else? What else does it say about this movement? Um, you can look at it, you can look, look on perpetual slash watch.com or dash watch.com um, they make a um, here I'll just show you right now so here is the pay the manual winding movement maybe yeah, I think it is Siegel but maybe I'm wrong ST19 they do some detailed chronograph reports um, so here's the website chronograph collection as you can see they also make a buy compacts which I almost waited for these are the buy compacts i i kind of like the look of this better but i've been wanting a moon phase for a while um and this one was available so i i and it was you know a decent price so i decided to just go for it um it's a movement so this is an interesting brand because it's it's like a boutique brand it's like a micro brand in china and they seem to really take pride in the watches they make. They seem to really take it seriously. Um, as you can see, the price on this one new is 500 um, with the calfskin or 600 with alligator. Um, they have a white dial one there as well. And this, so I, I found this one, and most of them are sold out. I found this one used, it's barely used for $400 on um, watch recon watch you seek so I got a, a little bit off um, if and when I sell it that's probably what I would try to get for it I'd probably just try to get my money back um, let me just see if it says uh, made in China watch movements the same um, you know they, they, they here it says on the website to Perpetual Watch Company was established in 2004 instead of using the expensive Swiss movements we employ the highest grade made in China um, watch movements. The same questions about the reliability of Chinese movements are frequently being asked to tackle the issues. We implement our intensive checking and screening procedures to the employed movements. Every perpetual watch is checked and assembled by our experienced watchmakers in Hong Kong. The original designs and attractive pricing makes perpetual watch an essential element that you have been missed, <laughs> missed in your life. <laughs> so it's a uh, Somebody with English as their second language wrote this. Um, we are a small workshop making only less than 100 watches every month. Our workshop consists of four staff, myself, two watch technicians, and my general assistant. Originally, we had planned to appoint agents to represent us worldwide. Despite of, despite of our efforts, only those profiteers and opportunists showed up. <laughs> no ideal partner was ever in sight. This is the result of way too many lousy Chinese watches kept flooding the market. The great majority of our fellow Chinese watch brands are to blame. Most of the internet watch sellers are actually not responsible for making their watches, just OEM orders from the Far East. All of their watches are all ridiculously lookalikes. <laughs> the performance level is not specified either, usually by vaguely stating keeping good time, but what does it really imply? I've just recently come to my senses that even if we have our agents appointed, our end customers are required to pay much more to purchase our watches in the process. The end customers are ultimately what our watches are, are made for. Therefore, we will serve our end customers directly from now on. You can now enjoy the X workshop prices through our exclusive online store. Seeing is believing. I'm certain that you will be proud to own a perpetual watch. The guaranteed daily accuracy within plus to minus 15 seconds. 
which isn't that accurate. Um, fully decorated movement, sapphire crystal, deployment, buckle. Um, two year warranty and free shipping by speed post. 3 day worldwide, all our standard features for our watches. No other watch brands can offer these features at this price range. Which is which might be the case. Um, this is a lot of watch for around $500. Um, I will tell you the reason I, I looked, I the reason I was interested in this um, be, was because I really like the Longines Heritage 1951. Let me see if I can find you a picture and we can compare. Um, so here's the, here's the Longines Heritage 1951. Um, this one is available on the gray market for about 1500, 1400, something like that. Um, in that range, maybe a little bit more. So you can see it's a similar style. So I don't even know what the style, what you'd call this. It's sort of like a, I really like this style of watch though. It's a chronograph, dressy, sporty dress watch maybe. I don't know, I don't know what we'd call I mean, chronographs are generally sports watches. Um, not always, I don't think, but you know, it was originally, a chronograph is used for things that aren't just going out to dinner, right? So, um, but I didn't want to spend 1400 so I saw this for 400 and I said, why not give it a shot? And I've been I've been pleasantly surprised. It's a really nice watch. Um, it feels like a watch twice its price. It feels like it's a um, you know a solid quote unquote tier three watch. Um, so you're getting a lot. For, you're not getting more than that necessarily. Although I'm sure if you know a more expensive brand had their name on it, you could you could charge more. But I think there's a couple things that, that keep it in that tier three range and not above. For instance, um, the plastic casing on the movement. Um, the, as I said, the deployment class is fine. It, you know, I, it's hard to even say. I've, I've handled a few deployment class and usually they feel a little higher end, but this is solid, it's still fine. Um, I haven't had any problems. I don't think it's keeping poor time or anything. Um, the, I don't know a huge amount about the movement. It is, it looks well made and it looks, it looks like it's legit, you know. Um, there are some other reviews out there that are probably a lot more technical than mine. So I, you know, you can always check that out. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Um, yeah, they have a, a selection of different watches and they, they're, they're all, gen they have some as, as low as 170 up to, they have a Torbalon, um, Torbion, sorry, <laughs> Torbion, um, that ranges here, there's some tor Torbions, they don't quite do it for me, um, I don't like the, the patterned background, the patterned dials, but, you know, a Torbion watch right here for 1450 so that's, that's probably one of the best priced Torbions you can find out there um, that actually functions. 1100 There's one for 1100 1100 So that's that's pretty cool, you know, that you, that you can get this high-end complication um, that's usually very expensive um, for pretty, pretty affordable. Um, so let's see, anything else to say about this? Well, let, let's just take a look at the, the function so you can get a sense of how the thing actually works. Um, so, let me see. I think to, it's a little tricky getting this. I, just, I think that's just me though. So now it's pulled out. Let's set the time to, it's well, it's noon right now, exactly. Um, Pretty much exactly noon. So then we'll close that. We'll just make sure I can, we can hear it. All right, so I'm winding it. Okay. Let me get the focus back. Okay, well, maybe it's best if I just have it down. All right, there we go, there's some focus. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. I don't know if anyone has any suggestions on better focusing. Even if I have a white background, it still seems to to struggle to focus, whether it's moving or not moving. It seems like if I get seen, it gradually came into focus. 
So you can see the seconds dial down below. Going away, going going at its business. Let's get the uh, chronograph function going. Is that did I not press it down? All right, here. There we go. I didn't press it down. You go all the way in. You have to really not hard, but it definitely goes in. All right, so there's the you can see the chrono. It's it's a little little stuttery, but not too much. You know, it's it's not bad. Um. Yes, it's not as much stuttery as, you know, it's a little bit, yeah, yeah, but I've seen, you know, I don't, I, I don't know if I've ever seen a perfectly smooth chrono sleep. My, um, I mean, here's, here's the Omega that I'm wearing right now, you can see that's a little, maybe a little smoother, but not much, okay? Oh, I don't have my, my date set properly, it thinks that it's midnight. Anyways, um. So the other thing that's, that I want to show you is the little functions here. So I don't remember what the moon... I think I set this last a few days ago. So you, you do this, and you just press that in. Let's see if I can get the focus first. Okay, I see why people use the white gloves, because you can... It's really hard to get a focus with my hand in the, in the shot which makes it also hard to sh for me to show you some of the things about this watch. But I can, sh hopefully this will work. Okay, so, see the moon going away? Bye bye moon, it's setting. You just press that, and that's the moon phase, and there's stars coming up, it's kinda cool, and then here it comes again. No, oh, we lost focus there, it's my hands. Um, I don't really wanna get the white gloves, I don't see myself doing that many reviews in my life, but we'll see. Um, see, look, there you go. All right. What about if I keep that hand out? And then, you know, you get the same thing over here with, with, with the setting of the, the, the day. Let's just get that to, it's the first, is that, now it's on there. Okay. So yeah, that's the perpetual, um, CO5, I believe it is CO5. Is that correct? Yes. I think I, that's what I said before. Um, let me just double check so I'm not giving you faulty information. Um, oh, the CO5 is the white dial, so it'd be CO6. Um, so yeah, I you know it's it's a it's a pretty cool watch. It's it's definitely um, I, I I can recommend this. This one is out of they're all sold out for this year um, until such time no response will be given. <laughs> So check the website if you're interested in it. I will probably hold on to this for a while. Um, I don't see it necessarily being a long-term keeper. I do like it a lot. Um, I wouldn't say I love it. You know, I don't. I don't give watches ratings and reviews because it's so subjective for me. I, I just. I mean, for me, watches are they're a subjective purchase or subjective thing. They're something that I buy for myself. Um, maybe if I was like a real, you know, semi-professional or want to, want to be professional reviewer, I would come up with this system. Um, but I just, I don't see the point of it. So I, I, I do like this watch. I'd say it's a really nice watch. It's a great watch for the, the, the price. It definitely holds its own with, um, other tier three watches, lower end tier three watches. Probably once you get up to 14, 15, Two thousand dollars, you're gonna you're gonna surpass it. But I think in the five, you know, the five to a thousand dollar range, five to twelve hundred dollar range, it's a really nice purchase, and it's and it's a good deal. And if you're, you know, I, I think as the, it sounds like on the website, they're a little defensive of the whole negativity around Chinese watches, which I I, I would understand that because you you think like what is it, one point four billion people, one point five billion people in China, um, not all of the stuff they make is crap. <laughs> I mean, they make a lot of cheap stuff that we send over here. I mean, they were even saying, he was even pointing out that, you know, um, you know, brands like Omega have some of their stuff made in China. So th there's quality made. There's, there's, um, you know, it's, it's not all cheap knockoffs. They're doing something, you know, even though the style of this isn't totally unique, it, it's got its own unique take on this style. And, and I really appreciate that. So Perpetual gets a thumbs up. This watch gets a thumbs up. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. All right, later. Um, 
This came in a little box here. I'll just show you the box that came in. Pretty, pretty nondescript, perpetual. There you go. Um, not, not really, not very exciting. Pretty standard, basic box. So the watch itself, um, it has a 41 millimeter case, and it is 13 millimeters thick. Um, it is steel and with a leather strap. Um, yeah, queer ver vera ta table. I don't know what it says. Anyways, so this this is the perpetual, and it is a cool little watch. I mean, it really is. You know, if you're willing to go outside of the normal sort of brand names, you can find some interesting watches out there, interesting deals. Uh, to Thundercat, it's a mix with different bands, but Thundercat is he's kind of a Weird experimental soul funk. I don't know, jazz type guy who plays bass and does electronica type stuff. Anyways, kind of interesting stuff. So this is the this is the Perpetual's the brand name, and the the watch itself is the Chronograph. C All right, folks. This is the long anticipated review. <laughs> of the Perpetual Chronograph watch. Um, I apologize for the lateness of this, but here it is. And um, so yeah, this is the, uh, Perpetual is the brand name. It's a Chinese brand. And um, by the way, we are listening to D04, I believe. Um, let me just look, look this up again. C05, C04. Um, maybe it's the 05, no, 06, okay, yeah, it's the C06, um, this is on, I believe, the calfskin strap, you can also get it on alligator strap.